Monster. Hey everybody, and welcome to the pregame show for the Washington football team's matchup against the Seattle Seahawks that's coming up this Sunday. This is Alex, your host at the Hogstye. I've got the normal crew here with me. We've got Steve Thomas and Jamal Forrest. Guys, hope you're having a good week. Uh, Jamal and I are dealing with some snow. Steve's mocking us because he never has to deal with snow down in Texas. Uh, I have to deal with floods, though. That's yeah, you have to deal with hurricanes. I would take snow over hurricanes. You know, I'll take a hundred like snowstorms over you know one what hurricane. The problem with a hurricane is because I'm I also lived on the Florida Gulf Coast too, so I'm a veteran of this. The problem with the hurricanes is that there's a two week p- buildup that slowly ratchets the panic level up, right? Day by day by day, and so by the time the thing comes, everybody's all in a Twitter over it. Even the veterans are. Um, and I just can't get too excited about anything. So I'm typically like Mr. Bad Attitude. I don't care about the storm. That's my modus operandi because I'm just so sick of the buildup. <laughs> All right, look, look, look. Time check, time check, man. No. You know what time it is. Let's, I was let's, trying to help it. Let's the... reel it in. Let's reel it in. Time check, time check. All right, all right, time check. We're... <laughs> We're just going to start chat. Anytime we go off that's, topic, Jamal, from now on, just shout time chat. No, no, I'm, I'm looking okay. out for our guests. Yeah, all right. Even though they can fast forward. <laughs> all right. Thank you, Jamal. J- Jamal, fr- friend of the fan, friend of the fan. Um, all right. Let's talk about what's going on this week with the team. Uh, there's some roster moves and some important off-the-field stuff to get to. And I also want to get to uh, something Steve wrote today. Uh about grading Ron Rivera so far this season. Uh, and let's do that one first, because I think it is a fun little topic just to kind of get people into the thing. So Steve wrote this, what would you say it is, like a two-pager for you? Uh, it, it was a fairly it was short one for you. Words, so whatever that comes 1300, out. 1,300, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I think that's about two, th- two and a half pages. of Just grading Ron Rivera, all sorts of metrics, uh, like grading his drafting, kind of his messaging to the team. Objective metrics. It was it was a bunch of criteria, but there were no metrics. Okay, okay. It was a bunch of criteria, Um, and and you gave him a very high grade overall. I I was kind of shockingly surprised because you're you're usually Mr. Pessimistic on the show. I'm I'm usually Mr. Like call it as I see it. And that's what I really try to do is just tell the truth. And if I think it's stupid, I'm just going to say it's stupid. It was, by the way, it was a lot longer. It was almost 2,000 words. Um, oh, wow. Yeah, okay. So that, was, that um, was much longer. But no, I mean, listen, I have a positive view of him. I, it, there are some things I didn't I have – he's done that I have, do not agree with. But the fundamental premise here is that this dude has survived the worst circumstances imaginable from no right. offseason at all. To this ownership disaster that's going on, that's lawsuits on multiple right. continents. About 40 PR ch- yeah. problems, no you know. No GM at all. The sexual harassment stuff that, or sexual misconduct stuff that happened. He had cancer, right. all these things. And what has he done? I, I'm not even really talking about the record. The record isn't great. It's better than everybody thought. But really what he's done is he's he has gotten these players to follow him. And he's given a reason right. for hope. And that all by itself... Uh, deserves a decent grade, you know. So that that my mm-hmm. fundamental premise was that. Um, now the things he's done bad, you know. I think his messaging at the beginning of the season was awful. He'd say one thing yeah. and it would be mean something else. And um, I didn't like when he benched Haskins, not because Haskins didn't deserve to be benched, but it just seemed like you know the kid never got really a fair shake with Rivera, and he kind of had his mind made up. So there was that. But I, I like what he's done with the team, in spite of the worst circumstances ever. He's and the, the players obviously love him, and so from that right. reason alone, I thought think he deserves a high grade. I, I mean, I'm not saying he doesn't deserve a high grade. I, I just I was surprised that you went as high as you did because uh, you gave him a, what an A minus in the end as an uh, overall grade. Yeah, I gave him yeah overall much. grade. Yeah, I know you broke it down group by group, and I think the lowest group you gave him like a B no, minus, I gave him a which C was... plus for messaging. Oh, C plus yeah. for messaging. Okay. By the way, I so, did read some comments. From our know nothings are in the comments section to see what everybody said, and I did notice that somebody caught the fact that I originally said a th- three game winning streak. The reason right. I said that is this has been sitting on my computer for three weeks. You know, right. back right. I originally started this after the Dallas game, and I just didn't finish it and didn't publish it till today. So right. it's gone so from you, a two you game to a three that. game. 
and <laughs> to a four game. Yeah, and I changed. I yeah. realized I forgot to put four, so that was what. Happened. Yeah, yeah, that was our our old buddy Scott oh, okay, who, well, yeah, yeah. who I saw wrote that. that. Yes, fact checked it. Again. Yes, and fixed it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, good catch, Scott. Good catch. Uh, he lo- he lo- he's that kind of guy. He loves to nitpick. So hey, I'm glad you know? somebody did because I mean, uh, you know, I should have caught that. Yeah, yeah. I just it's one of those things yeah, I've happens. read this damn yeah. thing too many times, and you know, I get it. I get it. Well, so so. Jamal, without going into the details, so, what overall grade are you giving Rivera? Uh, so, um, for, for this I'm season? not going to lie to you. I hate to be technical here, but when we're talking about a mid-season review, we got to treat this as a mid-season review. We're past that point. So, because I agree with what Steve is saying, I also need to sure. point out the fact that this isn't mid-season. This is after the fact. And if we're going to talk about, yeah, if we're going to talk about uh, mid-season Three because quarter season at this point, um, yes. we have to like what's going on now can influence your 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 opinion for obvious reasons um it can influence your opinion on how he's really doing mm-hmm. uh and, and this is just me being as objective as possible the mid-season review i would probably gave it a c minus um and this is what yeah who, yeah, yeah yeah that's Hold eight games in you're talking about um, that's my, that's my, that's my girlfriend face. No, sorry. Um, but anyway, <laughs> no, I ain't going, I'm not, no, but, but yeah, so, so I was saying like, if we're talking about mid season, what's that off the top of my head? Eight games in your, your three, your three and five, I believe. Was I, was I right? Three and five? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Two and six. Because they went two uh, and seven. No, yeah, I think we were actually two and that. six. Yeah, so they're two and they're, they were two and six. Um, and at that point, yeah. you, I mean, for obvious reasons, they weren't playing good football. There was a lot of things going on. Like the offense just couldn't get, couldn't get anything going. Um, the defense, we were arguing like to what degree of good are they? And at that point, they weren't they weren't that they weren't that good. Um, I believe that was mm-hmm. in the midst of them giving like giving up thirty points in what three or four straight games. Um, things like that. So at that point, we were trying to figure out what was going on with Ron, but also like, how good is this team? Were they, the, I'm talking about the players, like, were they overrated and things like that? We were having questions about the defense. With that being said, I'll be quick. This is a turning right. point where we can, what, what we're witnessing right now, we can revisit at the end of the year and take into account everything that's transpired. Um, because, again, I agree completely with Steve. There's nothing I disagree with at all, everything that he said in his analysis. But we have to take the full thing into account and then be able to project moving forward. So I think right now C- is for midseason, but things are going up, and they're going up pretty quick in terms of his trajectory. Yeah, I, I think so. Um, uh, by the way, I agree. I, I, I mean, if I had published it when I originally intended to, the grade would not have been what it was. It would have been right. Low. Sure, I, I think that's fair. Um, you know, he's Rivera. It's kind of like what we saw with Schottenheimer so many years ago. It, it's taken them about half a season to figure out the team, to figure out the coach, and vice versa. And now that they've kind of meshed a little bit. Uh, we're seeing some competent football, and it's really started to pay off. So, you know, I, I think that's what you're seeing right now. Um, and, and I'm with you. Like, I, I think if you'd asked me at week eight, I would have said this is maybe a C-plus team, you know, like overall and C-plus job that he's done. Um, but, yeah, now when you kind of look at what they've done the second half so far, that's an A. Like, that's a flat. So, you know, I probably would give him a, somewhere in the B-ish range. Uh, high B, you know, so I don't know if I like that's where I'd be at. Oh, that's really speak, good speaking of speaking of optimistic, now see, I told you, I, I missed told the show you. on Sunday, so I didn't have a chance to say this, <sighs> fellas. It looks like I'm right once again. Um, <laughs> I, I've I've <laughs> seemed to <laughs> suddenly remember that I had mm-hmm. a seven and nine prediction uh, before this season started, and I was. I was absolutely, uh, I was, I was called all types of, yes, I was mocked. Just, just put it that way. You I was mocked. mocked. And there was, there was a, there was a person oh, on this show who had me, us at three and 13. I think I was nine and seven. I think I one I'm had us at four and 12. And, um, Alex, I don't remember where you were at. 
Yeah. I, I'm going to pull it up yeah, right now. Sure. I'm going to pull it up. And, and Rob said, I, I didn't know what I was. He, didn't, he, he just shook my head and said, I didn't know what I was talking Jamal, about. Jamal, you were at 7 um, and now. 9. Oh. Uh, Steve was at 5 and 11. Right, I right? was at 8 and 8. I was, sorry. And uh, and our buddy Rob Henson was at 5 and 11. Hold up. I could have sworn somebody had this, somebody on the show when we did our right. on air record predictions. Had somebody, we, had it, we were at mm. 3 and 13. We gotta. I'm, I'm gonna have to. I'm no, gonna have to play I, it. You might be remembering a year before. Like, nothing was gonna years. change. For okay, I'm gonna have to look it back. Look it back up. But <laughs> but you're still. I the mean, point is valid. Good. Yeah, good. And shoot, Alex, Alex, Alex got a lot. To, he got a lot to say too. Yeah, yeah. I, I thought yeah, he had like you, six and ten. I so. think. Yeah, we're, we're in the same range. No, no, no. I, I I actually missed that show. I think I was out of town. And okay. Steve just asked me to give all my right, grades right, afterwards, right, so that's right. why they're in the post. All right, so how about this so. then? How about this thing? I'm gonna redirect. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I'm gonna redirect you know my, my 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 angst. <laughs> I guess is the word <laughs> to everybody who was listening. I still think I mocked to everybody you who was listening that mocked me, people. including yeah, Steve. Yeah, just make fun of Steve. Um, it's fine. It turns out that I was just not too far out, too far <laughs> off after all. It may have not went down the way it went down, that it, that I expected it to, but it. it I no. got, we're there. We've reached seven. We haven't got there yet, but out of these last three games, we'll get one more. We've reached seven. Just, just wrap it up. Yeah, I, I, I think <laughs> you are fairly safe yeah. to say we'll hit seven. I think we could easily get to eight at this point. Uh, you know, I think nine, if somehow they get on another, win all three of these things. Just remember uh, the Giants beat the yeah. Seahawks. I know, I know, uh, but and you know what? You never know what's going to happen in any of these games. <laughs> so that game, sad uh, as it is, might be the NFC East Division Championship game. No, which one? We, the, no, that's Philadelphia. No, right? We already played. Yeah, no, we're yeah. playing Philly totally last. Wrong. But that, but Philly's looking good too now that they've gotten rid of Wentz. You know, we played so. one decent game with a brand new quarterback. Yeah. I'm not going to ready to crown them yet. Quite yet. Oh no, no, no! I'm, I'm with you there. Like, but. It's unpredictable is my point. Um, so, anyway, um, yeah, I'm with you, Jamal. Like, I, I thought I was kind of crazy, you know, at the midpoint. I was like, I, I predicted 8-8, eight and eight, and they're like 2-6, 2-7. and, six, two and seven. Like, what am I? Now I'm like, okay, I was smarter than everybody thought. This is kind of history reliving <laughs> itself a little bit with the Mark yeah. Schottenheimer year. Yeah. <laughs> De- again, it's these defensive coaches, man. They get better as the year goes on, usually. We're just going to ignore the so. fact that the same thing happened to Jim Zorn, too, if I recall, didn't it? Oh, yes. No, no, other way. Oh, he went 6-2 and, and then 2-6. It was six. crazy because I, I was still young, year. like for me in my, my yeah. fandom years. Yeah, I was like, I, I still you were remember still the, hopeful. Next, yeah, was the next <laughs> season, man. I, 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 I got so emotional over a game. I think we lost oh, that the was Panthers the and Jake DeLone. Was was out there looking like he was a young Brett Favre. I was so I I was so hurt by this team. Like that was that was the point where <laughs> where I started I started becoming mm. numb to this franchise. It was crazy. Yeah, that I think that's a, you know what I think if you were to do like a study of Redskins fans, uh, that's probably a, one of those watershed years that killed a lot of them. Um, all right, guys, let's move on and talk about what's going on this week. Uh, first, there's some roster moves that, are, that have happened. Uh, the team picked up Lamar Miller from the Bears practice squad. Uh, he, Because he was a practice squad guy, he's going to have to be active on game day. So I'm assuming that means he's going to be a third or fourth back. Uh, I don't know. They haven't announced any other roster moves or <coughs> made this on, official it yet. Doesn't so. mean, it doesn't mean he has to be active on game day. It means he's going to be on the 53. Right, right. Sorry, he's got to be on the 53, yeah. correct. Yeah. So, we'll see what happens there. Uh, Steve, did you say you would pulled up his numbers yeah, or something? It. First of all, okay. this is a heck of a signing. You know, for a pickup off the back, you know, off the back of a matchbook, so to speak, I mean, this is right. a heck of a signing. So, Lamar Miller, um, whoops, wrong thing. Lamar Miller is 29 for anybody who asks because we yeah. got a debate about So, that. up there yeah. for a running back. Um He's on, a, on his career. He's averaged four point three yards per attempt. Um, he's got you know two hundred eleven receptions, which kind of flows with what Scott Turner's doing. Um, mm-hmm. He has thirty two touchdowns. You know, fifty eight over fifty eight hundred yards. He he tore his ACL last year. 
Oh, okay. Yeah. And um, this is why he, um, you know, none he's been with Chicago on the practice squad, and he's he was right. activated for one game, it looks like. Um, but he's basically not done anything. But this is, I think, this is as good of a pickup as you could possibly get for week 15 off of somebody's practice squad. Right, right. Try, just trying to fill a hole right now. Um, yeah. This also doesn't the other bode thing, well for Stephen uh, Antonio Gibson. No, no, and and let's talk about that because uh, you know they didn't have reporters at practice today because it was in the bubble with the bad weather. Uh, Gibson, they said, was working out some. He was working out on the sidelines more, not you know doing full drills. Um, and Rivera did say something along the lines of he's looking better, the toes looking better. Uh, not a full, like, he's good to go endorsement. Uh, but, again, it's Wednesday. The other one, of course, everyone's watching, Alex Smith. Uh, he was there in the bubble working out, but he wasn't taking any reps or anything. Haskins took all the reps. So it's still Wednesday. That doesn't mean it's a sure not happening for Haskins. Or, I'm sorry, for Alex Smith, like, that he's not going to go, but... I think uh, just be emotionally ready as a fan that Haskins is going to be the starter, um, you know, whatever that means. So the injury report came out while we've been talking here, finally. They're, it's a little late today. And so they had Alex Smith and Gibson and Davis and KPL all listed as DNP today. Right, right. Uh, I'm going off what uh, was tweeted out I by the one thing to listen to folks. is just and, the, yeah. the, um, I guess the so, you report know, on Thursday. It's, um, whether or not Gibson is still limited yeah. or if he's full, um, I guess. Th- yeah. Yeah, they're going to need uh, him, I feel like, if they want to win. Of course. I mean, I, I don't disagree. Um, I, I was I was just thinking out loud about uh, Lamar. I, I'm excuse me. I was thinking yeah, about Lamar that. Miller, like what, what type of uh, impact or percentage of plays he'll be involved in. So that's what I was thinking about. Um, Sure. Ah, uh, uh. well, let, let why don't we get into the offense first, guys? Because I, I think there's a bit of a wild card right now with the whole Haskins situation. Um, I've been talking about this a lot on Twitter, and one of the th- things I've realized is I keep on seeing people saying, "Well, Haskins is game. You know, why can't he do it?" Out? Ha- they really need to totally change if Haskins is going to start. They need to change their passing game to fit what he does better than what we saw last week, which was they kind of were still running that Alex Smith offense, which is a lot of dink and dunk. And that's not what Haskins can do. Like, he's not going to hit guys in stride for short, you know, and get the yak. Uh, You know, I think they need to work a lot more deep stuff in here. Uh, His best plays last time he was a starter were all these deep slants to Terry McLaurin. I don't think they trust so, him, though. That's the thing. They obviously yeah. didn't trust him against the 49ers. Sure. Sure. But the, the one nice thing is the Seattle defense is not as good as what they used to be, and they're definitely not as good as the 49ers. Well, no. You see, I, let's talk about the Seattle defense because they certainly aren't what they are in the heyday, and Richard Sermon and who's the other guy right. are both gone, you know, the corners. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. This team actually isn't that good against the pass, and they've been no. passed on a lot. They've been passed on more than any other team in the league. They've had 539 passing attempts against them, which is 32nd and last. Um, quarterback average quarterback rating 93.7. Quarterbacks have completed an average of 70 percent against them. None of that is very good. Um, no, you know they don't. They're they're uh, they are pretty good. They've gotten a lot of sacks, but. Other than that, they haven't got a ton of interceptions. This is I, I'm not sure this is a great matchup for us, to be honest, because they're better against the run. And this team, mm-hmm. especially either with a limited Alex or a Dwayne Haskins that's limited by the coaching staff, I'm not sure what we do well really fits with what Seattle does badly. No, and that's uh, my concern. That's why I'm saying you kind of have to change your passing attack to fit what Haskins can do, which is more deeper chunk yardage plays. Um, you know, because that's uh, going to be the way you pick up I mean, yards well, on offense this week. Good, I guess. Good luck with that. <laughs> and I don't mean that in the in the, like in the in a such a terrible <laughs> sense, but um, I still don't have any faith in. Dwayne being able to consistently complete 
any any range passes or any range throw uh, when he's when he's on the field. I don't have confidence in him throwing short, intermediate, or deep. Um, like he can throw you, he can throw it deep, but it's like, are, are you going to be able to see it in time? Um, there's a lot of plays where you just seen him uh, t- hold the ball too long or miss the easy throw um, because he took that deep pass. So uh, that's kind of weird. But there's two things. Excuse me. One one thing that I really wanted to point out specifically: <clears throat> Seattle's defense is not good statistically. However, um, they picked right. up a guy from the Bengals, um, Dunlap, and then they picked. They had a defensive tackle, I believe, that they had signed. Um, I'm, I wish I could bring it up like immediately because I, I just I'm just drawing blanks on their names. Um, but definitely Dunlap, Carlos Dunlap, um, and it was a defensive tackle that they had as well. Uh, point being, their last four games on the ground um, where they were a decent team, I mean, uh, excuse me, <clears throat> where they were uh, struggling at some points of the season, like their last four, um, they, they've given up 190 to the Giants, which is, is kind of random, but their last four is 57, 70, and 69. Um, like Steve stated, they're – our strengths or whatever that we need to do to, to be successful against them um, is also a strength of theirs, which is rush, rush defense. Um, and you're not really going to pass the ball uh, that well either. Like the last three games, they've given up less than 200 yards. Um, so they're not really – they're really good in the, in, the, in the past game recently too. So um, they're playing good defense compared to what their statistics would tell you. And it's something that we really need to – as a as a team, they really need to, to focus in on, and I think it has a lot to do with the people up front who's been able to, uh, I guess, steady them in a sense, if that makes any sense. Yeah, it does, and I think um, you're right about the stats. I think this is a – I mean, I normally believe in the numbers and everything, as you guys know, but I think this is a week where, yeah. in the case of Seattle's defense, the numbers really aren't telling the whole tale. I do think that they're better – than what the numbers suggest. I mean, they they played a bunch of good teams and they've been in a bunch of shootouts. You know, there's no doubt. I mean, you know, you know, they played the Bills. You know, the Cardinals put up a bunch of points against them. Dallas early in the season did too. Um, but they've got some good players. You know, and by the way, I mean Dunlop that Jamal's mentioned is listed by Seattle as the Leo, which is sort of a hybrid linebacker, defensive end kind of thing. Um, but Shaquille right. Griffin is a decent corner. Jamal Adams is having a good – their safety is having a good, having a good season. So there's good players here. And I just – like Jamal, I'm just not sure that Dwayne Haskins can really take advantage of the situation. You know, and I hear yeah. what you're saying, Alex. I'm just not really 100% confident that it's going to happen. Well, I'm not 100% confident it's going to happen. I'm just saying I think happen. it's your best – yeah. It, it's it's your best shot for a passing game uh, because uh, they're good against the run or better against the run. And, you know, right now our running game is pretty weak. Snacks here. So That's I'm not very confident in that side of things got, for um, Washington. They got here. Damon. He was on their yeah. practice squad for a minute, but um, yeah. I think he's been active the last five games. I think it's not possible for anybody <laughs> to put a defensive line. Hey, look, he fits the mold. Snacks. I remember we wanted him. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I think it, if it wasn't last year, a couple years back mold. when he was. I, I think they wanted him back when they also had pot <laughs> roast. You know, they wanted snacks. They wanted pot <laughs> roast. They wanted spice. Food, bunch of you food know. nicknames. Right. <laughs> yeah. uh, by the way, those are all food nicknames for defensive linemen that, you know, have played in the last 10 years. <laughs> um, uh, Rushing-wise, they are better. I mean – they're only giving up 3.9 yards per attempt. Yeah, they're, they're pretty good against the yeah, run. Yeah, and to so give us our bad running game, especially without Gibson, I mean, I hope maybe Lamar Miller can get a spark. You know, we'll see. But it doesn't, it's not, it doesn't bode well for Washington coming out of their running deficiency no. shell. No, it doesn't. Now, let's uh, switch side because if that's our weakness on weakness side of this game, it's going to be Washington's offense versus that defense. The strength or strength is definitely going to be the Seahawks offense and Russell Wilson versus this defense that's been lighting things up lately in Washington. Uh, you know, you're, you're starting to see national attention being paid to this defensive line. 
uh, and you know they're starting to live up to their hype uh, a lot more this year. Uh, you know, you're reading articles that John Allen's finally kind of figuring out how to play in this one gap system, which has taken him a while, but he's getting it now. And and I think you're seeing that on the field a little bit too, Steve. I, I think okay. you and I have both been pretty critical of the interior guys and some of these guys trying to make the switch, but we're starting to figure there's we're starting to see them figure it out. I'm still concerned about the linebackers. Uh, the secondary can get beaten up sometimes, and that's going to be the big concern I think this week. Uh, you are going against. Uh, what an MVP caliber uh, quarterback, even though he's slid off, what, the last few weeks maybe. Yes. Uh, they've had a little more struggles. But he's got two very good receivers that he's thrown to. Uh, Greg Olson hasn't been as much of a threat as a very older veteran tight end at this point. But, he's activated. You know, he's, he's been hurt, you know, and they've, they just yeah. activated him this week, at least to practice. So he may or may not play this game. Also. Oh, okay. I didn't know that he, he was, you know – questionable yeah. still um but i mean really with this team it's about those two big targets at wide receiver lockett, uh, yeah. metcalf and why am i blanking the other guy's name I this other one. thank you lockett um lockett and metcalf those are two nightmares to deal with for this yeah, i don't think you can underestimate dk metcalf i think no. he's become dramatically better than what some mm-hmm. people gave him credit for i did watch some of his film this week I mean, the, the word on him coming out of college was he was strictly a deep ball guy. He couldn't run routes. You know, yeah, he was fast and he was big and all that, and he was, you know, Superman, but he wasn't a good route runner. Well, that's not the case. He actually is a good route runner, and he has been tearing it up. If you guys aren't paying attention to Tyler Lockett or to TK Metcalf, let me enlighten you. I mean, I know you two have, but for the benefit of the audience here, he is – has a 1,180 yards. He's averaging 17.1 yards per catch. He's had 69 catches, 10 touchdowns. This dude is a nightmare. And yeah. I mean, his combination, he, remember, he's a burner. That was what scared everybody in the first place, whether he's huge and he's fast. He's kind of like the 2020 version of Terrell Owens. A little bit now. Yeah, he, he T.O., a little bit of Randy Moss, maybe. Uh, he's not quite that big. but He's a lot bulkier you know. than Randy ever was, so. Yeah, yeah. More, more like, he can run you over. He's built like a tight end. Yeah, he is. Uh, I, I'm just not yeah. sure our, our secondary is ready for all this, to be honest. I, 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 don't, I don't know of many secondaries that can handle a guy built like that. And, you know, you said he's got 69 catches. The crazy thing is, Lockett technically has more catches. Yeah, the one, you know? the one negative about... Metcalf is he's How many has he dropped? Balls. That's why mm-hmm. they both actually have the same number of targets. Oh, you don't have your number? Okay. Well, um, I don't have the, the credited drops in front of me, but he's had 106 targets and only caught 69, 69 balls uh, as compared to Lockett, who also has 106 targets and has caught 81. So he's right. dropped a bunch of balls. I couldn't give you the exact number to answer your question. But I, I didn't realize that they both had the exact same number of targets. Exact that's same. rare. So that that's yeah. his negative, but – I mean, I just don't know if Kendall Fuller and Ronald Darby are ready for all that, you know, especially with a not so great. I mean, Cam Curl is, you know, doing well, but he's still a rookie, you know. And, and he's a strong, not a free safety. Yeah, and then so. you got DeShazer Everett and Troy Apke or whoever's going to be out there. I mean, yeah, you know that I think inspires the, confidence. the tricky thing about this um, no. is my mentality. Like, I feel like all – when these type of matches exist, when you have a six three, six four dude – um, I'm. I don't know about the speed part. Anytime you're just playing a bigger receiver, the best way to to disrupt their timing and their rhythm is to get in their face. Um, whether or not that's going to happen with DK, because DK is strong enough to like I like we visibly know him to be strong enough where he can he can beat the press as well. Um, it's it's going to be tricky to see how they play it. I can right. I can. Very comfortably say, I don't know what the strongest game plan is, um, but I do think the best way um, that I've I've seen people play receivers this big when I mean even if you're uh, as a, as confident in good corners would do like you have you have two who who can play this like Darby is really good in the bump and run like he's an aggressive cornerback um, he can do this um, but you're still going against DK and that's where it's like. It's on the coaches to see how, like, to what degree is he going to do that. Plus, um, I'm sure they'll be getting safety help. So, 
this is a game where when you're talking about these receivers, uh, you're really keen in on DK. Um, and I think that the coverage should be aggressive. I, I just don't know, like, if, if I'm missing something. Um, but I think they need to get up in their face. I don't think you are. I mean, no. I don't know how you can play too aggressive against this guy. Uh, and, and, you know. I, oh, I checked his speed. It was He ran a 4 3 yeah, three he's got in the combine. speed. Oh, he's yeah. a lot bigger, 230 pounds. You know, he's, he's right. a freak of nature type of athlete. Um, now, Russell Wilson, I've watched a lot of Russell Wilson film over the years, and he has a very unique style. He scrambles a lot, sure. he improvises a lot. That causes a lot of sacks. The runs, best bootleg passer I think I've ever seen. Yeah. You know? But he gets caught in a lot of those, and that's why he's got a ton of sacks against him. But, I mean, this is an experienced MVP caliber player who, for the first eight weeks, looked like he was a surefire league MVP. You know, he has right. tailed off. But um, it's it's this week is – the problem with this week in Washington's defense is we have a quarterback who can negate pressure very well. And then you've got right. a nightmare – X receiver, and then Tyler Lockett is obviously not that same physical profile, but he's a, he can catch everything. So it's just not. I just don't think it's a good it's a good combination. And if you want to talk about Seattle's run game, they've also got two guys who can run: Chris Carson and Carlos Hyde. Both of them are pretty. Yeah. You know, Hyde this season has been a little bit off, but he can run. I've always liked him. And Carson's mm-hmm. averaging over five yards a carry. So this is a. If we get anything approaching the first half of the season Seahawks, this is a very tall order. Yeah, I think their running backs, when you look at their total numbers alone, no one's wowing you. But, you know, because they have Wilson who, you know, can still scramble and get a lot of yards, like, overall, they are a very capable running team. They do a little bit more by committee. Uh, It's not what we used to see with Seattle where it was just uh, Marshawn Lynch getting 50 carries anymore, but they, <laughs> yeah, or Sean Alexander before that. Sean Alexander was so good. Back yeah, those days. I was very upset. For like a five minutes. <laughs> he, he was with, remember we had him, burglar. was it Lane Sean Johnson? Alexander. Who was it? Larry Johnson. Oh man. Yeah. Oh, or yeah, the tiptoe burger, <laughs> man. He was so annoying. Yeah. I hated the fact that there he was good. Is. I ain't gonna lie to you. That's one, that's one running back where it's like, bro, how are you? How are you? How do people let you get all these yards on them? A little envy. How do they let you do that? And that's what I respect. I yeah. <laughs> he wasn't a burner or anything. He was just a physical runner, man. Well, running's more uh, about but, physicality and vision yeah. more than anything else. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but regardless, uh, this is not that kind of Seahawks running game that we saw for 20 years of one big physical guy. It's a committee thing now. I mean, it's a passing team. It, you it, know, is. What it is. It is that, too. I yes. mean, you know, just don't don't undersell Russell Wilson. And, and yes, he's fallen off dramatically. If you look mm-hmm. at the numbers in the passing game over the past about five weeks or so, it's fallen off tremendously. But I and he had a terrible game can, versus New York. I just don't think you can count on that when you're playing these guys. I, I don't know how no. the Giants did it to him. You know, that was kind of the low mark of the season for the Seahawks was the Giants game. Yeah, yeah. I, I don't – I mean, I watched the whole game, and I was kind of flummoxed by what was going on. Like, I, it just seems like Seattle didn't plan to come game. and play. They had you – know, yeah. it's as simple as that. Yeah. Um, I, I'm very wor- – like, yeah, I don't know – because this defense has been very good the last few weeks playing mostly against pocket guys. But, right. like, Chase Young isn't going to be able to do a delay blitz and get to Russell Wilson like he did last week. No. Uh, you know, that that's not going to fly. And I don't think Chase uh, has the speed to chase Russell Wilson. Chase has got a great, amazing first step, but he doesn't yeah. have a high top-end speed. He's not a sprinter. I mean, he ran like no. a 4'8", 4'9", 40 in college. Um, yeah, he, he's not going to – if Wilson rolls out away from him, he's not catching thing up is to him. burst. Yeah, yeah. right. And now, I mean – the, the Seahawks just pounded the Jets into oblivion last week. So right, I'm, but I'm it's a, the Jets. I know, but I'm afraid they sort of got their mojo back. That's my fear. Well, maybe they'll – hopefully they got overconfident because they beat up on the Jets. An experienced you know? right. Super Bowl caliber team and quarterback is probably not going to let that happen. No, I know. Hey, I, I, nice and you beat somebody by 37 yeah. points. You I, know. I, a boy that can dream. room for a letdown. Um in all senses of, of the like of the yeah. spectrum, like when you're talking about 
when you talk about gambling and when you're talking about just general. Like, you feel good after a win, you let your guard down a little bit. Um, and that's not to say, like you said, Steve, it's, you know, it's still, we still talking about Russell Wilson and, and, and Pete Carroll, but uh, it happens it happens to the best of them, to be honest with you. It really does. Um, so, we'll see in terms yeah. of, like, how they, how they come out. Yeah. I, I do think they – Seattle is a team, like, they – they're not like the Pittsburgh Steelers, but they're going to get off to a bad start. Like they can, they can get it going and get it going early. And like you close your eyes and you down seventeen. Like you don't know, mm-hmm. but that's just um, that's just the nature of it. Like it may, they may have a letdown. It's possible. I can see that being a factor in this game. Well, you mentioned the Steelers, and I would say if you're going to think of a game plan that you should kind of mimic versus this offense, it's that game. Uh, you know, Steelers, that is a very good receiving core they faced earlier uh, this year here in D.C. And, uh, you know, they, they did a good job keeping those receivers in check. But what did they do? They basically just rushed four, maybe five from time to time, but, you know, they kept most of the secondary back and most of the linebackers back in coverage. And I think they're going to have to play that kind of game again you're not going to get to Wilson, uh, just like they didn't really get to Roethlisberger. And he's a different but cat, if you can though, keep, you know, so Roethlisberger is just a big dude who knows how to operate in the pocket, and Russell Wilson yeah, is going to run away from you. I, I know, but I'm saying more just that overall. You, I don't think you can oh. blitz Wilson and get to him. Oh. I like, yeah, I you know, and, and I think if you do that, you leave openings for these receivers. So. You know, I think you're going to have to play some conservative defense well, it's here. It's worth mentioning that Seattle's been a lot worse on the road than at home. Mm. They're three and three, in, on away games, uh, you know, and they're nine and four overall. So they're six and one at home, and they're traveling right. east five hours, coast to coast, east. So I mean, that bodes well, at least bodes differently, <laughs> you know, for Washington. So, I mean, will it be at their peak? Maybe not. No, worth mentioning. No, that's true. And I was actually going to double check and see if I can figure out what the weather's going to be like oh, on Sunday when they play. Uh, just because, you know, if we're getting bad weather now, I'm wondering if that uh, so bad far weather you help look, us Yeah, I'm about to then. say, so far you're looking at a 45-degree day. Oh, no, it's going to be sunny, dang it. Mainly sunny. Mm-hmm. Yeah, sunny and 45, hey, <laughs> no good. Well, we got we to gotta earn this dough. Doesn't help us. <laughs> um, uh, yeah. Yeah. Well, also, they're used to bad weather. Northwest too. is, from yeah, so Northwest, they like get, they get 30-degree days like it's nothing. Um, and it's mostly rainy out there. You ain't seeing that right. much snow. Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, in Seattle, excuse me. I, as far as I know, I've been out there a couple of times. No, no, they don't. You're you're right because they get a lot of the Gulf um, Stream, but I will, warm weather from the Pacific and all that. But my point is that it it's not Miami. That's my point. I know. That's I know. Point. I'm just I'm well, looking yeah, for straws here, man. I'm looking that, for this, any edge we can find for this team. I don't know, like, comparatively speaking, I don't know what it's been um, looking like this year compared to, like, the last two or three years with Seattle. But this defensive line has all the makers in the world to wreck a game. Um, and this uh, Seattle, like, one of the things that they struggle with, and it's kind of crazy how you have a, a quarterback like Russell Wilson, but they, they can't necessarily get him a – a stable and really good offensive line. Like even throughout his, his his entire career, he's running for his life, making plays, which is which is 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 what he does, and that he he's good at it. Yeah, I, I get what you're saying, and you know there is something to to it about you know he's always had trouble with the line. Um, and at the same time, I always feel like, and there are exceptions to this. Generally speaking, these guys who are running around to try and make extra pr- plays that does just make things harder on the line overall. And so sometimes, you know, those, you know, sack numbers go up and other number, other stats look worse for the line because, yeah, Russell Wilson or uh, Tony Romo go back, going back a little bit, all these guys love to do is just keep running around in the backfield, running around the backfield, and then they take a sack. And it's really on the quarterback a lot more when that happens. Yeah. And, and we see that here in D.C. where, uh, you know, guys who get the, have gotten the ball out quick, suddenly the lines look great, you know. Well, that's a big part of it, and it, yeah, I, I think Russell Wilson is. You know, I, I remember when I watched Paul Richardson's film, 
back when you know we signed Richardson, and I thought that Wilson actually hurt Richardson's game a lot. Because he runs so much and he improvises so much, and he's always rolling out. He cuts off one side of the field, and a guy like Richardson, who's relying on timing more so than physicality, it didn't really hurt. It didn't really help him to have a quarterback like that. But the problem is, one, he's got a perfect receiver for that in Metcalf. Yeah, throw it up yeah, a guy who did. doesn't care about timing. Yeah, and two. <laughs> I think for the even the, yes, the defensive line has been a racking crew. Let's hope they can do it again. But I think Wilson is the perfect type of quarterback to negate that a little bit by virtue of his play style. You know, so this is why I'm saying I don't think it's a great matchup for Washington. Being the strength of their defense may not be uh, maybe negated a bit by the quarterback and throw in a a, a receiver who's just a nightmare. Um, yeah. I don't, you know, this may not be Washington's best game. I, I mean, I, I think that's going to be the case. I, I, I don't feel very optimistic uh, coming into this thing as I've been grasping at weather and any other possible solution to what could, you know, save the team uh, and get a win. Guys, who want to do score predictions and wrap this thing up at this point? Uh, I feel like we've, you know, rambled long enough. <laughs> Of course we want to. This is the whole purpose of the yes. show is to do this. We always, yes. We've been getting all these wrong, by the way. Um, oh, yeah, absolutely. We did get the 49. I got the 49ers right. I did predict the win. Oh, uh, yeah. I, I said that they were. I think I did. I think, I, I I think we a, all did. I made a prediction. I said Jamal it was going to be a close game. Here, right? um, it's going to be a tough game. Like, I actually he, he was, was close a, to the score, too. Like, a three-point yeah, yeah, game. Close, yeah. so I think 23-20, but they ended up winning by uh, one possession. 8-25, whatever the score was. I don't know. 25-17. Uh, yeah, yeah, I guess I'll go first uh, in the prediction game here. Um, I, I'd love to. I mean, I just got through writing a two thousand word piece about how I believe in Ron Rivera and all that stuff. But I think this is a really tall order. I just think that Seattle's probably just too good for this. Um, I, I think they're going to put up a good number of points here. So I, I'm thinking this mm-hmm. is going to be something along the lines of. Like thirty-one, twenty-one, Seattle. I I think you're pretty dead on there. I, I, I'm guessing Seattle gets like thirty-five on us, um, and maybe thirty-five, twenty-eight, something like that. I, I'm I'm. Oh Lord, this is. You know what's crazy about this game? I'm gonna be quick. I'm, I promise. What's crazy about this game is that it it, it tests you against your. It tests your objectiveness versus your fandom, if that makes any sense. And I'm, I'm like, man, mm-hmm. we can beat them, but are we going to beat them? <laughs> are we going to beat them? Um, and that's what's that's what's kind of driving me right now. Um, like Pittsburgh, the P- Pittsburgh prediction. I, I I do think that we'll we have the strength to keep it close, and we'll just have to, you know, capitalize in moments. Um, and with that being said, this is probably that. That one out of the three games that we probably mess around and in, in, in lose, um, shoot, I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go 20, 27, 27, 17, Seattle, 27, 13, Seattle. Um, I just don't think we have the firepower on offense to to keep up with them. Okay. Yeah, I kind of don't like yeah. my prediction now that I'm kind of my 21 points means we're going to score three touchdowns, and that's just not going to happen. So I, I think I'm not locked on yet because so, the show's not over. So I'm going to revise. Uh, you're, you're I'm gonna, dropping. So, yeah, I'm going to drop. So what I will say points, though, too, so um, is that this yeah. is going to be a great test for the defense. Um, it's going to be a great test because we've said me. I don't. I don't remember you, Alex, but I know me and Steve agreed for a while that this defense was good, not great. Um, and this is one of those instances, just like Pittsburgh, um, that, and then just like San Francisco in its own right, is going to test you and see like where they really stand this late in the season. So, uh, I will be, I would love to be wrong on 27 points and we end up giving 20, giving up 20 or giving up 17. I mean, I agree with you guys that the defense is good, not great. And the, the test to me is we've been terrible versus quarterbacks who can run. And this is one of the best of the best. So, uh, you know, we, we got our butt kicked by Lamar Jackson. Uh, we got our butt kicked by, you know, a couple of different guys who are mobile, Mayfield. And so I'll be curious to see how Russell Wilson, 
if they can, and this might be something they have to figure out in the offseason, you got to find a linebacker who can keep up with these guys uh, and be, a, like, a good spy on these mobile quarterbacks. It's a so, it is. It is. All right, guys, uh, I think that should wrap up this week's show. No. Uh, I know we got a... weather for 10 more minutes. No, no, no. I'm actually just going to say off the air, hey, uh, maybe we should I cut out, like, wanna, three of the wanna, four wanna, or five no, minutes listen, of weather. They can skip past it. That's all. Don't worry about it. It wasn't that long. You know, I... Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't yeah. that long. It was, it was five minutes of weather. <laughs> I just know when Jamal tells us to move on, that means we really need to move on. Because he doesn't yep. normally do that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I, I might cut out some of it. I'll, I'll see if I can find a good little bit. Um, okay, guys, uh, but hope you guys enjoy the game, and we will talk to you guys afterwards. Stay here with the Hogside. Thanks.